If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. I want to talk to you tonight about following God. You know, looking in the Gospels and seeing what Jesus had done uh, when he was looking for his disciples, you know, it was really simple. Two words. All right, what are the words? Follow me. And even in our own salvation, uh, God and the Word of God has made it clear that we need to follow Him. And you think about it, uh, we follow a lot of people. Uh, you know, I, I look at grandchildren sometimes, and I look at mine, and, you know, they'll be following behind, you know, and, you know, and they'll do some things and say some of the things I say. Uh, so I have to be really careful around my grandkids uh, because they will just, Kylie especially, uh, she just cracks me up. But, uh, you know, following me is just a simple, uh, and really, I believe Jesus was giving a command there. And so when we start our salvation walk, uh, we follow uh, Christ. And the bottom line is we never stop following Christ. Okay, that should be a goal. That should be a purpose. That should be an action in our personal lives is following Christ. So tonight I wanted to share with you two things you can do while following Christ. Two things that uh, you can do while following Christ. Number one, watch God work. Don't you love to see God working? I am telling you, I love to see prayers answered. Uh, Sunday, uh, I always, you know, when I hand the mic to somebody, I, I go back and I get rid of my headset here. And when I turned around and looked back in here and saw the front of the sanctuary filled up, I'm telling you, my heart was just full of joy. Okay, just because, because of what God is doing, uh, man, it's so neat to watch him work. Number two, wait on the Lord. Okay, while we are following, there are times that God says, wait. Okay, and we, we're not good at this at all. It's kind of like I've told you the gifts or if the fruits of the Spirit. I believe the last one we master is patience. And waiting is being patient uh, with others, being patient, uh, you know, in our own lives and waiting on God. Let's look at this uh, scripture in Psalm 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Listen, folks, God has a plan for our lives. Sometimes we may not see it. Uh, sometimes uh, it may not be clear to us, but there is, uh, you know, uh, a plan that God has. He has established a plan for your life, and we need to follow his plan. And to follow his plan, folks, we have to be in tune with him, okay? We follow him through the word of God. We follow his plan uh, through prayer. We follow his plan through being obedient, we follow his plan by following the light. He gives us light. And, uh, you know, he does all these things. So it really takes the pressure off of us, okay? Because if, we, if he's got the plan, then our only job is to follow his plan. So the steps of a good man are ordered and established and guided by God. Verse 24, though he fall, he shall not fall. Utter, he shall not be utterly cast down. What is God saying? We're not going to be perfect. We're not always going to do the right thing. This does not give us a license to sin. That is not what he's talking about. But we are only human. There are times when uh, we may be at a weakness in our life. We're not as strong. Uh, there are periods of times uh, where sometimes God even seems silent. But folks, I'm just telling you, even when we fail, when we stumble, I'm telling you, God still has a plan. And I believe there's a perfect will of God, a perfect will of God. And even when we miss that, I believe God can, uh, you know, kind of back things up and realign things where we can get back to the plan that he has for us. For the Lord upholds him with his hand. And when I see the word upholds, it, it, it tells me forgiveness is a key. All right? And 
I know sometimes even, you know, when we discipline kids or grandkids, you know, we'll, we'll get upset and, you know, we'll, you know, whatever we do, however we discipline them, we'll, we'll have a scowl on our face, you know, for a while. And uh, even, even my father, you know, I just, when, when he got through, man, I wouldn't look at him. I didn't say a word. I, I'm just telling you, uh, you know, but God, God is not that way, folks. He forgives us. If, and if we truly repent, all right, he restores us. And I thank God for that. Verse 25, and I have been young, and now I am old. And the question is, where is the old line at? All right? I, I don't know. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say in general speaking, probably 60 years old. Okay? This is just my personal opinion. And when we were young, you think about this. Man, we had energy. Uh, you know, we had life. We had adventure. I mean, just like now, Lori and I, well, she's not 66 yet. She will be in November. Uh, but even going on vacation, you know, I, you know my, my things of importance is resting, relaxing, and eating. Okay? Uh, we'll take a stroll down the beach at night, you know, that romantic stroll with the sun setting. But we will not go too far, all right? Why? Because I'm old, all right? And it says, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. Oh, listen to me, folks. It doesn't matter. We've been in tough situations. Uh, we've been in, uh, my father was, he, he worked for Southwestern Bell. And every four, I think it was every five years, they would have contracts up. And they would literally, he would be out of work till they got the contracts done. And I seen my dad uh, work at a furniture store. I seen my dad work for a plumber digging ditches during those times. Okay, and, and that's what I'm saying. God even provided things when we felt like there would be no way, uh, there was a way. So you can see, uh, you know, uh, he takes care of his, uh, you know, his children, and, and he always provides our needs. And, and Philippians says, uh, my God shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory. Nor is descendants begging for bread. He is ever merciful and lends, and his descendants are blessed. I thank God for the mercy of God in my life. Uh, folks, uh, if I got what I deserved, I'm just telling you, I wouldn't be standing here preaching before you. God's mercy is extended to us all. God's grace, uh, even in salvation and on in our life, uh, should uh, you know, we just need to thank God for his mercy and his grace. And when we talk about the word blessed, uh, folks, we are a blessed people. We are a blessed church. Hold your finger there and go to Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Watch God work. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Psalms 103, verse 1. And all that is in, within me, bless his holy name. Kind of sounds like a song, doesn't it, Steve? That is it. I mean, word for word. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And again, in working, you know, we people that work and have contracts and you know, they have health benefits, you know, annuities, they, you know, all kinds of benefits. But when you think about the benefits that you have because you're a child of God. Folks, I'm telling you, it is just neat to see God work. I'll never forget when we first got married, uh, we had forgot, uh, we had taken out some insurance and we weren't used to uh, the insurance and a bill come in for, it, was, it, was, it wasn't even $100, but uh, folks, we were living in a trailer, $150 you know, a month on that, and we just didn't have a lot when we started. And we got to where this insurance thing was due, this, this payment was due, our first one, because we forgot all about it when we budgeted it. And we just started praying. We didn't tell our parents, uh, you know, uh, the first thing we, you know, most people would do, they, they would just go to their parents. But we just started praying. And folks, you can ask Lori, two days later, the exact amount of the insurance 
came in because we were overcharged on something else. Folks, that is God. That is benefits. Who forgives our iniquities? I could not live another day without the forgiveness of God. The forgiveness of God. Folks, these are all benefits. Who forgives uh, all your iniquities? Who heals your diseases? Tony, you say amen to that, won't you? All right. Sometimes, truthfully, we feel like we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. But I am telling you, God never leaves us. God never forsakes us. Okay? Uh, we God, let me say this. God's working even when we don't acknowledge it. God is working when we don't even see it. And there's sometimes, and in my life has been where I don't see things and somebody, another Christian, has to point that out to me. And it, it goes like this. Well, Mike, have you ever thought about this? And then they'll say something and I'll say, no, I really didn't think about that. Folks, God's working all the time. He is working for our good, who redeems your life from destruction. And that was salvation, and that definitely was my testimony. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. It's like a love that a mom has. I'm just telling you, uh, when I'd pull my dumb tricks, you know, like the bike over the ramps and I'd skin up both knees. I'd go in and mom would clean it up and she would, you know, kiss it and uh, put a Band-Aid on and just take care of me, you know. And if it was a Saturday and my dad was there, son, get up, go wash that thing off. All right? <laughs> you ain't hurt. You're bleeding, but it don't look bad to me. Aren't you glad God has that kind of love for us. He loves us when we're hurting. He loves us when we are down. He loves us when we're sad. He loves us when we're glad. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. Oh man, that's got to be food, folks. <laughs> that's got to be. All right, one of my favorite smells is homemade yeast rolls baking in an oven. That is one of my favorite smells. And if you're really lucky, they'll make cinnamon rolls out of that same batter. Okay? Man, you get up. Oh, son, you think you just died and went to heaven. Anybody hungry tonight? <laughs> all right? I'm just telling you, food, everything, all this provision comes from God so that your youth is renewed like eagles. And you know what? My new saying is, age is just a number. I'm serious. You think of men in the Bible that 80 years old and, you know, Caleb says, give me that mountain. All right? And one of two things happens in life. Either you, you know, uh, and, and I'm not saying giving up or anything like that, but, but you don't, uh, and let me put it this way. Your frame of mind is so important on the aging process. You know, I look at some of these folks that are aging now. I'm not going to go out and run a marathon. Do I look like I run at all anyway? <laughs> Matter of fact, if you see me running, something's chasing me, all right? Okay? But I'm simply saying that, you know, there's times in our life that I think we sell ourselves short. Okay? I shouldn't say because I'm 66 I can't do this. Now, it may take me more time, okay? I may have to do it a different way, okay? But God, I'm just telling you, age is just a number. And, and when it comes to serving God, folks, I, I'm telling you, I believe some of the most mature people are senior adults. They've been in life. They've been in war. They've been in hurt. They've been in pain. They've been hungry. They, you know, they, they've seen things. Uh, we don't even know when we talk about depression, the big, the, you know, the big depression in the thirties. We, I mean, most kids these days don't have a clue about what that's about. I mean, <laughs> you look at our cabinets, you walk in there and it's like, what do I want to eat today? And so folks, I'm just telling you, God takes care of his own. Then verse 27 says, depart from evil and do good and dwell 
forevermore. Now he's just giving us some sound advice. For the Lord loves justice and does not forsake his saints. And again, it doesn't mean all our prayers are going to be answered. Everything's going to uh, be right. Everything's going to go our way. It doesn't mean we're not going to have a problem, but God takes care of his own. What seems sometimes as unjust, later on, God corrects those things or sees to uh, sees that we are blessed because we, and, and here's the deal, folks. If we're going to follow God, we need to do the right thing every time. Follow God means walk in his footsteps. Think, oh, there's many times I ask God, literally, God, I, I, I need the mind of Christ. I want to think like he thinks. You know, and even like going, you know, you, you would know where you need to go and what you need to be doing. But to me, the battle is in our minds. It's in our minds. For the Lord's love justice and does not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. All right, forever, no matter what happens to us. Folks, no matter what, when we die, we're going to heaven. We punched our ticket. All right, there's no turning back. And it says, but the descendants of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever, forever. I thought of two words when I thought of following God. Two words that I think are very, very important. Number one is character. All right, we need God's character. We need Jesus' character. Our character is so important. Our morals are so important. And the second thing, not only character, but conduct. All right, when we follow God, we need, to, we need to do the right thing. Man, people are watching us. Our families are watching us. Younger, the younger crowd is watching us. So we need to make sure our character and conduct is what it needs to be. Verse 30, the mouth of the righteous speaks wisdom, but his tongue, and his tongue talks of justice. The law of his God is in his heart. What is he talking about? He's talking about the word of God. Okay, if we're going to follow God, we need to look at his instructions. The Bible is his instruction booklet. If we're going to follow God, we have to spend time in his word. I have yet to counsel anybody that my word to them after I listened to them for 20 minutes was, I think you're reading your Bible too much. <laughs> it ain't going to happen, folks. We always need to read our Bible every day, every day, every day. We need to spend time with God. None of his steps shall slide. What is he talking about? Hey, God's word is a firm foundation. It is the rock, folks. The wicked watches the righteous to seek to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. So, Let's watch God work. And folks, he is working every day of our lives. Number two, verse 34, wait on the Lord. That's what verse 34 says. I found an old list that I had, and I don't know how old this is, but I had done this way early. I can't even remember how old it is, but it's old. Joshua waited seven days for the walls of Jericho, Jericho to fall down. And you know... Those, those inside the wall are thinking, what are they doing? Why are they? And then they marched through and they just kept doing it. And the walls, Paul waited three years to begin his ministry. Joseph waited seven years to become the prince of Egypt. Jesus waited 10 years to begin his ministry. Abraham and Sarah waited 13 years for a son. Jacob waited 14 years to marry Rachel. Well, I better move on. Moses waited 40 years to see the promised land. Noah waited 100 years to see rain. And here's the one. This is why I know this was at Cameron Baptist Church. I did this uh, more than 30 years ago. I wrote this list out. Mike Till, who was the youth minister when I was going to Cameron Baptist Church. And when I got the youth ministry position, he moved up to associate pastor. Mike Till waited 30 years as an associate pastor to, to become the senior pastor of Cameron Baptist Church. And folks, I have, I have a huge respect for Mike Till. All 
All right. He, he really guided me uh, when I had made my decision and uh, I started, he, he started me teaching in the youth division. I was teaching seventh grade boys. And the thing I didn't know is they ran their last two teachers off these seventh grade boys because they just would not pay attention and they would not listen. And I'm telling you, I had a great start. And that's where I really, really knew and felt like the call of the ministry was on my life. So we need to wait and wait on the Lord and keep his way. Folks, I cannot tell you how important waiting is. And even in, well, let me say this, especially in our prayer life, okay? I believe we quit praying on things way too early, way too early. Wait on the Lord. God has three answers he can give us. He can say, yes, you can have it right now. Yes, this is in my will. Yes, it's, I'm answering your prayer. And we like that one. Matter of fact, we love that one. Then he can say, no, that's not good for you. That's not in my plan. That's not going to happen. And we really don't like that one. But he also tells us, wait. I may give it to you, but it may not be right now. And do you know the hardest part about that is? We don't know how long God is going to do that. We don't know how long. And folks, what he does during that time is he's teaching us patience. He's teaching us persistence. He's teaching us that we don't get. I mean, we would be like spoiled children if he just immediately gave us everything we prayed for. So waiting is huge in God's uh, you know, timetable and in his ways. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. Isaiah 30 Isaiah 30, verse 18. Isaiah 30, 18. There we go. Just one verse. The Lord, therefore, the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted, waiting. All right? And that's the whole thing. He wants the glory for our lives. And folks, it takes discipline to wait on God, it takes discipline. And I truly believe we miss God many times because we won't wait on him. And it says that he may have mercy on you, for the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are those who wait on him. You want a blessing in your life? Wait on God. And folks, the second part of that is give God time to work. Okay? Give God time to work. And then back, back in Psalm. <clears throat> back in our psalm, the Bible says, and he shall exalt you to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, you shall see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away and behold, he was no more. And, and the Bible says, matter of fact, look, look back in Psalm 37. Verse 1 and 2, do not fret because of evildoers. You know, sometimes we think, well, man, they're not walking with God. Or I don't even know that they're saved. Why are they successful? Why does it seem like the blessing of God is on their life? Do not worry because of evildoers. No, be envious of the workers of iniquity. We shouldn't envy what they drive or envy the home that they live in or envy what they have. For, for they shall soon be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. He's just saying, folks, I am telling you, when it's all said and done, God is a God of justice. You don't worry about what somebody else is doing. You don't worry that, that maybe someone who, who doesn't do the right thing, maybe they cheat on their taxes or they do things that are just not right. He's telling us not to worry about those things. And then as we keep on going, it says, verse 36, Yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but he could not be found. Folks, everybody is going to stand before God. 
Everybody's going to give an account of their life before God. So we cannot worry about someone that seems to prosper who is not a good person. Let God take care of it. Verse 37, mark the blameless man and observe the upright, for the future of that man is peace, is peace. And folks, uh, when we talk about peace, uh, it's, it's just so important. Look at, look at verse 7 and 8. Psalm 37, 7 and 8. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. What we can do sometimes, and folks, I, I really believe rest is in God's plan. When we are tired, we make bad decisions. When we are tired, we can't do as good a job. When we are tired and, and have these things going, that's why, I, you know, I was joking about the four days, but folks, I'm excited. I, I mean, I'm excited to get under an umbrella and do absolutely nothing. I need time for my body uh, to rest also. And look at verse 8, or, or do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes, cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. Three times in Psalm 37, don't worry about others. Okay, don't worry. God's got this. He's going to take care of these things. Then verse 39, but the salvation of the righteous is from God. He is their strength in the time of trouble. The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. In Isaiah 40, I know you know this, but man, it's a good waiting verse. Have you not known, verse 28, have you not heard the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he never faints or is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. I think it was Warren Wiersbe said, even when you can't see God's hand, trust his heart. Trust his heart. He gives power to the weak. To those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Folks, I am a testimony of this truth. I'm... I never get tired of the work. I never get tired of the work. Sometimes I get tired in the work. Sometimes my physical body just wears down sometimes and, and I need rest. But I'm telling you, the thing that wakes me up every morning, and, I, and I, I mean this with all my heart, I have never got up as pastor of Rye Hill Baptist Church and said and even thought, I don't want to go to work today. It's never happened. And folks, we need to rest in the Lord. Father, thank you. Thank you that it's a simple command. Follow you. Follow you. And God, I thank you that we can watch you, you know, just do your thing, God. You do things for us all the time. You give us that second blessing many times. And God, I pray that we would continue to work on waiting on you. God, you've got a perfect plan, perfect plan. It, it's, it's who you are, and God, you're not playing hide and seek with us. And God, when we're not sure, we need to wait. When it's not absolutely yes, we need to wait. So God, as we wait, God, I just know your word says it's going to work out. It's going to be all right. So God, thank you for Psalm 37. Uh, what an exciting chapter. Uh, what a shot in the arm for the week, in the middle of the week. And it's just like this week, man. It's been hot. It's been hot. You know, and man, sometimes our tempers are a little on edge. And sometimes we just, we say things and we complain. And God, I'm just thankful that we can come to a church that is air conditioned. Uh, I'm thankful that we can drive in our cars and we're not walking to church. And I'm thankful that we have electricity. Uh, so God, help us to be positive. God, I pray that we would follow you, follow you in every area of our life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.